You are on the Sticks and Stones podcast. My name's Kai, and today we've got a very special guest from Australian Metal Act who just released their third album, Node. I've got on the phone bassist Alex from North Lane. Welcome, mate. Hey, how are you, man? <laughs> oh, yeah, going pretty good. Now, it's been a huge week for you guys. The release of the album, you've been flying around the country doing signings uh, left and right, and you're heading out overseas for a massive world tour at the end of uh, at the end of the weekend. Now, first up, Node has already had some hu- high attention around it and it is uh picked to top the charts um uh, with next week's are your charts how has the week this week been uh good it's been you know it's a long time coming we've we uh finished recording the record towards the uh oh, it was just after march off memory so it's it's nice to finally have it out there have everyone listen to like you know north lane 2.0 and what we've been working on and a whole bunch mm. of positive positive feedback. Kids have been really stoked at the signings and it's just been a really, you know, a really good week. And hopefully if we uh hopefully we can um you know, score number one on the charts and round it off even better. But, yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's been a great week. Well, it seems like your only competition at the moment is another heavy act, uh, Lamb of God. And you actually don't get it that often, especially in Australia, that you have two metal acts fighting out for the number one position. What's it like going up against a release like Lamb of God's l- latest album? You know, they're bloody metal royalty. Well, it's it's Lamb of God. I guess you don't need anyone <laughs> to explain, you know, how big that band is. So yeah. the fact that we're, you know, it's either between us or them. That that's crazy. But I think the fact that metal bands are in the top, you know, five or the top ten for Aria charts these days just really shows how how much of a huge following that this genre of music has. So yeah, either way, th- no matter what what happens on the charts, it's still great that heavy music is making a making an appearance up there yeah well it seems like nowadays like you do have your top runners like bands like amity affliction and parkway drive and more recently an act like in hearts wake and now north lane like how is it um you know merging your way into the top tier level of the um, metal acts in australia yeah it's look it's it's like anything it was a, it's a growing and a learning experience you know we'd with Singularity, we got number three on the Arias, and that for us was we never expected anything like that. So mm. to to be second time around here in the the, the top five, you know, that's just we're just five dudes just playing music. You know, it's crazy. It's, it's yeah. still kind of you got to pinch yourself sometimes to go, okay, yeah, this is actually happening. Yeah, well, there was uh, quite a bit of, you know, uh, curiosity around this album. Like, it is the first full-length album with uh, Marcus as the frontman. Now, we heard what at the start of the year. That was our first taste uh, to it. How has fans been reacting to Marcus taking over Adrian's role? Um, I guess when we did Rot, there was a lot of still uncertainty. So Mm. you, you had those people that jumped on and loved it straight away. There was the people that totally hated it, and then there was those middle ground that were like, yeah, I don't want to judge, but it's interesting. Um, and then, you know, as, as time go, went by and, and, and more fans who came to shows and saw the transformation and, you know, like the next the next phase of, of North Lane, we're slowly winning winning over the uncertain, uncertain fans and all the, the ones that were like, oh... I don't know if he's the right fit and I see a lot of people that come up and, and, and comment on our Facebook page saying, you know, I wasn't really a big fan, but I'm totally won over now. Like mm. you guys did a great job or, or things like that. So yeah. overall, I think um, we, we couldn't have hoped for a better transition. You know, when, when someone as important as a mm. front man leaves, it could really go, it could go good. It could go okay. It could go really bad. And, and I think we, we we were lucky enough to have a really smooth transition, and our fans 
are just stoked about it. So yeah, well, and it's been good. It's been great. Yeah, it's been a really fast transition as well. Like it was only September last year that it was announced that Adrian was leaving North Lane, and then with it, less than twelve months later, um, you brought Marcus into the band and have released a full length album with him um, at the front as well. Now. That was a pretty fast turnover. Were you guys, like, once you found out that Adrian was leaving and you knew that you had to find someone else, like, obviously it was a stroke of luck that Marcus came along, but were you like, okay, we have to strike while the iron's hot and try to get out new music with Marcus on the leads as fast as possible? Well, we when, when everything happened last year, we had already made an agreement with a band type of thing uh, that we were like, okay, we did the Free Your Mind tour mm. um, and we were going to take a few months off to start, you know, album three, to start writing. And that's when, before we got into anything, that's where Adrian was like, look, whatever happened, like because of his health and mental issues and he he didn't want to be a part of the band. So we already were gearing up for the writing process. Yeah. Um, and as we were looking for a new vocalist, we were still writing. So it's it's a type of thing where with with the writing structure of North Lane, it's always the music before the vocals. So mm. not having a vocalist didn't stop that. The, the, the music was still being written. Um, but then it also helped out because when we were kind of set on Marcus, he was demoing, uh, you know, for, for what the single would have been because um, we originally wanted to put Ohm out as the first single. Mm. And so he did a, a few demos on that and then you know, we showed management and we all kind of came to the agreement that it was maybe a little bit too different to put as a first single. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then that's when we re, we re went back and, and did rock within like a week and a half and in the studio rewriting that and all. So there was still like a base to, to what we had for the album. It was like 13 or 14 song ideas, but then yeah. once... We were 100% with Marcus and everything was announced and we really kind of put it into gear and, and started working towards what would be, you know, Node. Yeah, well, it has been um, a huge album for you guys. Like, I know it has only been out for less than a week as well, but it's already gotten great reviews. You know, you got a feature album on Triple J. I probably shouldn't be mentioning that station because it is a different <laughs> radio station. But, you know, something like that for a relatively young band is a huge thing, especially a um, heavy band like North Lane. Now, how has Marcus been dealing with... Um, you know, all the hype and everything around it. You, the rest of you guys have had a few years to build up to it and he's just got thrown straight in to the deep end. How is his mental state going? Um, look, Marcus, he's, a, he's an, an interesting character where he's very, he's very relaxed and he's very chilled out and just goes with the flow. So, so when he jumped into everything, you know, we kind of eased it in, you know, like everyone wanted to have an interview or the first, you know, the first talk or the first this. And, and we, we kind of eased him in and took things slow. But, you know, he's very much alike how we are. Mm. And, you know, when you spend so much time with a particular bunch of people like you do when you tour, like it becomes less about five guys together on the road and more like, you know, friends, like a family. So it's like yeah. if one day he's stressed out about pressure or this or that, we're like, all right. You know, we, we, we'll always listen. We've, we're in the situation. We've been where you are type thing. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's really good, man. I think I think the biggest, the biggest like, crazy change for him, which he had to really adapt to, was when he joined the band, he had never left the country. Yeah. So, like, it was, he was, like, shocked to be playing in all these different places around the world. But then it's like, okay, I kind of miss home a little because I've never been away from this, like, for this amount of time. Which, you know, we've been touring for three, three, nearly four years now, and everybody gets homesick. Everybody, mm. everybody has those like, man, you know, I'm, I miss my dog or I miss my girlfriend or this or that. Um, but yeah, like, yeah. Be, being thrown in this type of a situation, sometimes some people can't handle the pressure, and some people, who knows? Yeah. But 
<laughs> we'll Clear see enough. how he goes. Well, he seems to be killing it at the moment. And talking about going overseas, at the end of this week, you guys are heading straight out to Mexico and going on North Lane's biggest tour today. Yeah, hitting up Mexico, then through Canada, through the States, then Europe, and then finishing up in Australia for some massive shows. Now, how do you even prepare for something this big? Um, well, unfortunately, we're not going to Mexico anymore. Oh, really? But, Why um, not? Yeah, the promoter pulled that show, I think it was about a week and a half ago because of, um, I'm not sure, he's done a couple shows there bef- like in the recent months and there haven't really been uh, good turnouts and stuff for whatever reason, so it was a little bit too much of a risk on his end, mm. um, which kind of works out in our favour because like it, like you just said, we are just about to embark on some of the biggest tours that we've ever done, so it's a little bit more time at home to kind of practice and prepare and you know, to get back into the flow and back into the routine of things is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's a lot of, we've just been doing a lot of relaxing, practicing, <laughs> like, you know, mm. making sure that we have our songs down as as perfect as we possibly can because we've never had a month off before playing new, like completely new songs. So it's it's very different because of the music is... You know, a little different, but also the pressure of where we are, and yeah, it's just been a whole whole month of preparing and getting ready and making sure we are a hundred percent up to scratch, which yeah. is. Awesome. Always good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's not just you're rehearsing and relaxing and, you know, signings and stuff you guys have been doing. You also just uh, brought out a brand new film clip as well for your track Impulse. Now, for anyone who hasn't seen the clip yet, what's it all about? Um, visually, it's uh, something a little different. It's uh, It's kind of like meant to be set in kind of like a digital-esque world Mm. um where lyrically the the song touches on you know the social media and 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 how we are in today's society where everybody is kind of disconnected from each other because of things like the internet and it's so easy to go online and say mean things to people or do this or do that so the um the the video we tried to do something a little bit different and kind of set it in like a CGI a digital world to kind of relate that type of theme, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's definitely one of uh, one of the most interesting and coolest clips that we have shot before. Um, there was actually one of, one of the scenes in there where we're like suspended in midair playing and and shooting. Awesome. Definitely interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in a in a in an exciting and fun way, we were was strapped into a harness and pulled off the floor in a rock climbing gym and said, yeah, here, play your songs for three minutes trying to headbang in midair. And <laughs> that was, you, you could imagine how funny that would look. Ah, uh, life is yeah. a rock star, geez, it's our life. <laughs> <laughs> but it, um, no, we're, we're all really stoked with the end with the end result and it's uh, Jason, the guy who filmed and directed it, is nailed it. He's nailed every aspect of what we wanted to do and couldn't be, couldn't be happier and, you know, hopefully... Hopefully the people that are watching it think it's cool, though. Well, on that note, that is all the time we have today. And, Alex, thank you so much for your time today, bud. It's been an absolute pleasure. No worries, man. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me on, 